and welcome to episode 33 of Little Big Knits. This is a podcast about knitting primarily and I'm your host. My name is Selma, also known as Selma Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Canada, where I live with my family and our cat Yoda, who's sitting on the chair over there. And uh, I'm coming to you on a snowy early January day in 2020. Happy 2020, everybody. Um, it's a new year and that is pretty exciting, I have to say. It's a new decade. Some people have gotten very excited about that. I keep forgetting that it's a new decade. I am stuck on the fact that it's 2020 and I always think of 2020 vision. So here's to 2020 vision in 2020. Oh, I'm drinking my tea today out of this cup that happens to have my name on it. I don't know if it says Selma or Amles to you, um, but the most exciting thing about this is that on the other side it says just one more row. And my friend Sue gave this to me for Christmas this year and uh, it's really fun. So yeah, um, so Happy New Year. As you can see, I still have uh, some decorations up and that is because we celebrate Epiphany usually. Um, this is a pretty uh, typical thing to do in Finland and to be quite frank, I'm not 100% sure uh, what people really do besides eat more cake and cookies <laughs> on, on Epiphany. I know that in South America, for example, uh, kids are given uh, gifts on the 6th. It's the Day of the Kings. Um, we generally destroy our gingerbread house, have some friends over, have some coffee, some tea, and uh, and break up the gingerbread house that we made over the holidays and uh, and just have a, a couple of hours of chatting and, and spending some time together. And then all the decorations come down. So that'll probably be happening on Sunday the 5th since the 6th is a Monday. So that's why there are still some uh, decorations up. And, and to be quite frank, I really enjoy my Christmas decorations. So I try to keep them up as long as possible. And uh, I may be a rare bird, but I also really enjoy Christmas music. But I did put the Christmas music away yesterday. <laughs> I thought, okay, that's probably enough for this year. So anyway, welcome to the podcast. And a um, couple of things have happened now that it's the new year. First thing is that the Garment Galore Cal has ended. This was a year-long Garment Galore Cal that my friend Kate of the Hawthorne Cottage Craft and I have co-hosted together. And the last day for that, pod, uh, for that podcast, for that Cal, was the 31st of December. Now, I think both Kate and I were uh, a little behind and only ended up closing our threads on the first or the second, so you may have been lucky and gotten an extra sweater in there. Um, we hosted this and this was primarily about knitting garments and I have to tell you there were like over 800 sweaters in the general finished objects thread which is pretty amazing that's over 800 new sweaters in the world and um, lots of lots of inspiration in that in that uh, in that thread as well as the other threads Kate had the yoked sweater thread I had the men's sweater thread and we also had a summer fibers thread so, so many beautiful sweaters. I cannot tell you how often I had to go and find it in, in the pattern section of Ravelry and favorite it so that I could keep it as a reminder for something to knit in the future. So anyway, thank you so much for participating that, in that if you did. Um, it was a really, really fun cal. I've had some people request that we do it again and I'm not close to that idea at all but I'm not quite organized enough to start another gar uh, another knit along so maybe by the next podcast sometime in late January or early February I'll be ready to announce something. Um, I've also been thinking a little bit about a stash down component to it um, because there seems to be an interest in that as well. I'm a little interested in that. I just feel like my yarn closet is about to bust open and I really need to get a bit of a, a bit of control on that, if that's even possible. Um, so that's something that I've been thinking about. So let me know if you're interested in a knit along, uh, if you're interested in continuing or starting the uh, Garment Galore Cal again, um, if there's something that you'd love as a special thread in that knit along or anything like that. 
As far as the prizes for the 2019 Garments Galore Cal, I'll be filming a separate little uh, special edition with to announce the prizes and um, and so look out for that if you did participate in the knit along um, and watch out so that uh, you can see if you've won a prize. So um, the other thing I wanted to do before we go any further is to announce the winner for the beautiful Bijou Basin yarn that I talked to you about last time. So um, I asked you to comment in YouTube. We had 424 entries, I believe, and I pulled out uh, the random number generator on the internet and got number 66. And so what I did was I ordered, you can order the comments from newest to oldest, and then I went from the bottom and I counted up to 66 and uh, found the winner for this beautiful yarn. This was to celebrate having 6,000 subscribers. So thank you to everybody once again who has subscribed, who comes in every time to watch and hang out with me. Um, thank you so much. There were a lot of new subscribers uh, last time. So welcome and thank you for subscribing. Um, and just thank you for, for hanging out with me, really. I really enjoy doing this and, um, and the interactions that I get from this. I've made friends because of podcasting. Um, I feel like it brings community not only to me but to other people as well and uh, it's just so much fun. So thank you again and let me tell you who the winner of this is. Winner is Peggy Bork. Peggy Bork, you have won this beautiful yarn. So which has one of my hairs on it, please get in touch with me. Uh, probably the best way would be to either comment here in YouTube or get in touch with me on Instagram or Ravelry. Just send me a note and uh, send me your address and um, I'll be happy to send this along with you with a few other little goodies. So there you go. Before I start telling you about my knitting and what I've been doing, perhaps I'll tell you what I'm wearing. This is a knit you guys have not seen. Um, geez, when did I make this? I'm gonna say a good five years ago. Um, and this is a, this was an, an improvisation, essentially. Uh, it is made out of Malabrigo Rios yarn. And I wanted to make a cowl neck tunic for myself and I decided to improvise it. I ended up adding the collar on last, and I'll tell you a little bit about the collar in a moment, but it's, an essen it's essentially a um, raglan top-down construction. As I said, I made it out of Malabrigo Rios, and I think this is their Midnight in Paris colorway or something, something like that, like Paris Midnight or Midnight in Paris colorway. It's this deep blue color. I had gotten it at the... Um, at the uh, Malabrigo Mill or Dyeing Center in Uruguay at some point. And I wanted to knit a cowl neck and it's a tunic. So I usually wear it with either like a skirt or leggings or something like that. I'll just give you a little, I'll just show it to you. It goes just about to upper thigh length. It's just like this. And what I wanted to do was to have something that had buttons on the back. Can you see that? They're black little um, sort of uh, vintage buttons and, it, and, and so it opens but it, it can also be closed. I can put these two things together and create a smaller closed neck or have it open and have it as a more open neck. And, um, and that I was looking to make something like that and rather than looking on Ravelry I just sort of decided to do it myself and see what would happen and it worked out really well. I've worn this a, a lot over the last five years. So um, yeah, I couldn't tell you how I did it. I don't even know if I took any notes. Um, <coughs> but um, I sort of knit back and forth. Um, I think I just made this sort of like just straight up. I just picked up the stitches and knit and uh, put on little loops, I believe, or did I do little holes for the buttons at the back, uh, for the buttonholes, and um, yeah, that's it. Maybe what I'll do is insert a little video of it closed from the back so that you can see that. Um, and 
And there you go. This is, uh, this is what I'm wearing today. So let's get on with some of the knitting that has happened in the last month or so. I have to tell you that I just had the strangest mojo in December and I think that that was a result of a couple of things. Um, I have a tendency to get a little stressed out before Christmas and I think that had an impact on things. Also, um, I was in the process of getting things organized to change jobs. So as of this coming Monday, I'll be actually starting a new job uh, in a completely different area that I've been working in for the last 21 years. For the last 20 years, 21 years, I've been working in the area of uh, language, uh, second language evaluation for the federal government. And I'm moving into a completely different area uh, for global affairs, which is our foreign affairs uh, department. And uh, this was um, an offer that was made to me early in September, actually, but we had to wait for secret clearance. And, um, but then early in December, um, the clearance came in and we were getting all the paperwork together. So it was, um, there was a lot going on and I have to say it had a little bit of an impact on my knitting, I have a feeling. <laughs> and uh, I just, I don't know, I, c I can sometimes get into this situation where I feel like I'm in between knits and nothing's really working out. And anyway, that seemed to be what was happening at the time. However, it was also the beginning of the Advent season and when I was in Ireland in early November, Kate and I were, uh, we exchanged a, an Advent calendar for one another and we both made the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart, also known as Curious Handmade. So we gave each other uh, 24 little packets of about 10 grams of yarn um, and some little goodies in there as well and um, and each day we knit a stripe on the blanket <clears throat> so I finished my blanket oh my gosh the colors just look amazing don't they it actually started here this was the first 10 grams and as you go ahead in the, the blanket the stripes get shorter because um, the rows get longer and you create this big square type of thing. Um, so this is a square throw and there is the end of it. Now I have to say that Kate's minis ended here because I made a little bit of a boo-boo and I had made a mistake somewhere when I started to decrease I wasn't decreasing at quite the right pace, so uh, one side of the blanket wasn't having the number of decreases that the other side of the blanket was having. So my blanket is not quite square. It's not particularly noticeable, but it did mean that, I mean, it's a little bit noticeable if you fold it in half and you hang it down, you can see that one side is a little longer, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I wasn't gonna go back and, and and, and start the decreases again. I really wanted to, you know, move forward with it. And I was just enjoying it so much. And I thought this is going to be a throw in the house. It's got such a bucket full of wonderful memories. And so I just, I didn't want to stop. Um, so I ended up adding these three minis here. Um, this is actually a hedgerow yarns. This is an old green yarn that I just happen to have about 10 grams of and it's an unknown yarn. And uh, this last one is a mini that came from Martushka Yarns from Marta. And the rest of them are all minis that came from Kate. Um, I, I won't name them all, but there were a lot of dyers from England like uh, or from Ireland uh, like um, Fine Fish Yarns. Um, who's actually one of hers is one of my favorite minis. It's this one right here that had these greens and peaches and blacks going through it. Um, there was Olan, there was a bear in sheep's, a bear in sheep's clothing. Um, my goodness, I can't even think of any others, but it was just such a delight to knit this thing. I ended up stranding it with um, a cream mohair. So it sort of muted all the colors and gave it this sort of pastel look all around which I really 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 like and it has made it an incredibly warm blanket like it's really amazingly warm so even though it's a um, it's a throw it's not a full-size blanket I find it really really does the trick 
It's wonderful, 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 wonderful. So thank you, Kate, for all, it's like my little Linus blanket now. <laughs> um, thank you, Kate, for all the wonderful minis. And it was a really fun advent to do. I'm not a huge advent person, but I'm starting to quite like the idea. This was like really, really fun. So that's one finished object. The other finished object is something that I just finished yesterday. And it's actually a Christmas present and it's in this little Christmas bag. Um, it's a Christmas present for a friend of mine. She wanted to have tabby socks, which are, um, well, rather than describing them, I'll just show them to you. I just finished them last night, so the threads have not been sewn in, but she wanted socks that have a toe on them like this, the big toe, so that you can wear flip-flops with them. Um, and so I found a, a pattern on Ravelry called the Geisha Split Toe Up Tabby Sock. Um, and uh, I'll put the name of the designer down here because I, I, I can't remember the name at all. Um, and I chose, she wanted some, she actually said, feel free to make them into Franken socks. And because there was quite a bit of work that you had to do on your own to try and figure this out, they gave you sort of a recipe, but you still had to figure, figure the numbers and, and uh, there was Kitchener stitch that happened in putting the two sides together. I just thought, I don't think I can work the Franken sock idea into it as well. And I, as I said, it was December and I was just feeling, you know, sort of a little discombobulated. So I thought I'll just take some really fun yarn that I have and I make the socks with that. And this is a super fun yarn by Arctic Crafts, who is Bente out of Norway. And um, this was a colorway, one of her earlier colorways that um, she has, I think, slightly modified, but it has a similar idea and it's called, I believe, Arctic Spring. And this was one of her early skeins uh, that uh, my friend Sue had gotten from her and had, had given me. And I have to say the speckling is just amazing on it. Um, I just don't understand the speckling thing, <laughs> how, how it's done, but I think she did such a great job. This was so much fun to work with. I absolutely love all the little funny speckles that are in there little reds and there's some mustards occasionally and so that was super fun I really loved your yarn Bente and so I finished these last night and um, there's still a bit of yarn left so this will become something else at some point um, so yeah so I finished these and hopefully we'll be able to give them to my friend tomorrow at Christmas time I actually presented her with this bag and the skein of yarn and the big toe, which had been done on one foot. <laughs> so, and she tried on the big toe and it worked. So then I knew I could, uh, I could continue on with the rest of the sock. So those are essentially my two finished objects for the last month and a bit. Now, last time I showed you guys a cardigan that I was improvising with yarn that I had gotten in Ireland. And I was having some second thoughts about it. So first I would like to thank those of you who commented on this sweater, whether it was to tell me that you thought it was wonderful or whether it was to tell me that you too were kind of thinking, mm, mm, mm. And there were quite a few of you that felt the same way as me. And so I've decided that this is going to get ripped out. Um, <clears throat> and I have not decided what I'm going to do with this yarn yet. But I did see that somebody had made the Turtle Dove sweater by Espace Tricot uh, into a tunic with pockets and no turtleneck. <laughs> so they had modified the pattern quite dramatically, but it looked really great. What I did was I did a search for Brooklyn Tweed Quarry yarn, which is a bulky weight yarn, to see what had people done with that. And I found that sweater there and I thought that could be really fun to turn this into um, kind of a, a fun tunic to wear with jeans and a turtleneck underneath or something like that. So it could become something uh, of that nature, but I haven't quite decided yet. I decided to just put it aside for now and, um, you know, let that, those ideas mull around in my mind and we'll see what ends up materializing. Let's see. So thanks again for all your great comments. That was really helpful and affirmed that, yeah, this for me at this point is, is going to 
get frogged and become something else. In that time, I started a pair of socks for myself, which then ended up um, kind of being put aside as I got to the gusset. I am started the um, pattern called the vanilla is the new black, but it's the reversed one, so it's meant to be inside out, but you essentially knit the sock the regular way and then I think you flip it inside out. Um, which I, I don't really care so much about, but uh, this is a pattern called, I think it was called the reversed vanilla. Uh, I'll put it down here. It's by Anna Fletcher, who's actually a local designer, and she has a really unusual gusset and heel construction. And I've been intrigued by that for a long time. I bought the pattern a while ago, and so I decided to start that. Um, but I stopped once I got to the gusset, because as I said, my mind was just kind of like, no, I can't do this right now. So I'm hoping to pick this up in the next few weeks again. And this is being knit out of yarn that I showed you guys uh, in the last couple of episodes. Some green yarn that I was uh, wanting to cast on that I'd had in my stash for a while. It's uh, the Schaefer Yarn Company Anne yarn, uh, which is a mohair base. This company actually doesn't uh, dye yarn anymore, um, but there might be some people destashing it if you're remotely interested. Um, it is a wool, nylon, and mohair blend, and it's got quite, I don't know if you can see the, it's got quite a bit of a fuzz to it. And um, I, as you know, if you've been watching for a while, I've been wanting to try different types of sock yarns to see what type of warmth they provide. Now, I did read some mixed reviews about this yarn, um, that it doesn't wear particularly well, that it felt. I think this is going to be one of those sock yarns that I'll probably have to hand wash uh, in order to, to keep it for as long as possible. But um, I am curious to see how it is to wear yarn with mohair in it on my feet in the winter time. So I'm very curious to try that out. And so I will be persevering with this um, with this pattern. As you can see, I kind of stopped mid gusset and put it down. But I do hope to uh, to start working on this again in the next couple of weeks um, or so because I do want to have those socks, and I'm really intrigued by the construction uh, with the gusset on the bottom and then the, an, an, a different kind of a heel construction. So let's see, let's see what happens th with that. It's being housed in this bag by uh, Paradise Island that I just love so much. It's such a great, um, it's such a great bag. Um, it's almost always handy, I have to say, and my sock yarn tends to like to live in it. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you about, because I'm gonna have to hand wash those socks, I'll probably be using this. I've had people ask me uh, to share how I care for my knits and perhaps I'll tell you more about that in the future. But I tend to put my sock, my socks, my hand knitted socks into the washing machine on a delicate cycle with anything else that I might be putting in like other um, other sweaters that are, are able to be washed in the washing machine. I have to say that even the superwash yarns, the sweaters, um, made with superwash yarns, I tend to wash them by hand. I don't trust the machine for them. But socks generally are fine. I had one pair years ago felt on me, even though they were supposed to be superwash, but I've never had that experience again. And I usually use this German. I've been using this for years. It's called Pearwall. Um, this is a German company that makes all types of different um, liquid detergents. And this one is for uh, uh, fine cloths and wool. So I think things like silk and wool, and I'll put uh, a little bit of this with the socks and anything else that I am washing. I'll put my nylons, like my pantyhose, and um, you know, I have these uh, store-bought thin merino layering pieces. Those will get put into the machine with the socks and so forth. And I'll be using this as a hand wash for the mohair socks as well. Now, I used to get this uh, there are two places not far from me where I could buy this and both places have closed So I'm not sure where I'm gonna buy this in the future. We'll have to see I won't have to think about that probably for another couple of years because this is a relatively new bottle And I really don't need a whole lot of it when you do a wash 
but I used to get it at a vacuum cleaner store near here and a Polish shop and they've both closed. So let's see what I end up uh, doing to find it. There are some other uh, German and Polish or Russian shops in the, in the city and so they might, they might end up having it there. So what is next? So one thing I did in uh, late November, and in fact, I completely forgot to even tell you guys about this, was that I took a class with Arne and Carlos. So my friend Crystal and Patricia Paradise Island, who's now living in Ottawa, the three of us went and took this course with Arne and Carlos, which was really fun. And it was on Norwegian stranded knitting. Um, and so they, they have a really great attitude. They're quite um, uh, orthodox in certain aspects of knitting that are related to, uh, to knitting, but very laid back in other aspects. Um, for example, you know, they talked about the different methods of holding yarn when you knit Norwegian stranded color work. Um, and I won't share too much about that because that is really the crux of their course. Uh, but they also were very laid back about things like this whole idea of jogless knitting. That just doesn't seem to be something that, it, that is of big concern in, in traditional Norwegian color work knitting. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they talked about some other things. They talked a lot about sweater construction, which was really interesting, um, especially about uh, top down versus bottom up. Uh, for color work, for example, and the idea that the, 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 the stitch orientation changes and that can have a little bit of a, a diff, uh, an, an impact on the look of the sweater. But anyway, overall, it was such a fun course. They were a hoot. Uh, if you've seen them, they are hilarious together and um, very knowledgeable. Talked a little bit about history of uh, color work knitting, which is very interesting and I would love to learn a little bit more about knitting history so let's see what uh, what there is in, in my future for that. Um, I think a lot of times we end up with courses on techniques at festivals and such. It would be really interesting to have some historical uh, courses on history of, of different types of knitting because it turns out that stranded knitting is not a very old technique. It came um, probably from the Baltic states, I believe, and not that long ago, like in the last couple of hundred years. It's not something that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. So that was really fascinating. So they, <clears throat> we had to get um, this yarn, which is the Rowan Cocoon, which is a bulky, bulky weight yarn by Rowan. It's kind of a uh, sort of a single ply, which I always had concerns about, but they had a garment knitted out of this and I was actually quite impressed by how it seemed to wear. So we got it in the cream and we got it in this blue color, which is color 26, I believe. And the cream color is color 15, I believe. And they gave us a hat pattern and we started the hat. I have not since finished the hat. But that is something else that I'm hoping to do in the next month. So it's the start of the hat. And I did learn a new technique for doing color work, which I thought was really, um, it was really interesting for me because I never thought that holding my yarn in my other hand would ever be comfortable for me um, and it, it it was so it was good to try that out and I think that it made the actual color work knitting easier for me in many ways um, because I often struggle with tension when I'm doing color work and this just has fabulous tension so I think that employing that that technique might actually make my color work knitting a little bit easier. So this is just a, a bit of a beanie and um, it came in this in this little little gauzy bag and I do hope that um, I'll finish it before the next time I podcast and I can show it to you. I have no idea who's gonna wear it. We'll see. And the next thing that I have yeah, I ended up casting on a lot of things, it looks like, <laughs> in, that, uh, in that sort of 
search for mojo, I cast on a bunch of things. So last time I told you actually that I had cast on the ranunculus and I once I finished the advent blanket, I gave myself the uh, permission to continue knitting this. So this is where I am. I'm sort of quite nicely down the body. I probably have about this much left to do on the body before I do the sleeves. So I expect this to be finished the next time. So this is the ranunculus sweater. It's my second time making it. Um, the last time I made it in a mauve and then I wanted to knit it in this beautiful, beautiful combination of two gray yarns. And I talked to you about it last time. I'll have to put the yarns at the bottom because I have no recollection of what they are. I know that this is an ancient fibers or ancient arts yarn that is a wool linen silk blend or something like that i can't remember the base and i'll put it down there and then this was a slightly sparkly um, lang mohair looks i believe that i'd gotten a while back so i put those two together and i think they've created an absolutely stunning gray i can't wait to have this as a sweater and it really is such a fun fun pattern um, and because you're knitting it on six millimeter needles, it just it just whizzes by. So even though I haven't had um, a huge amount of time to knit on this, I've gotten quite far and I promise I'll be wearing that next episode. This is being held in the bag and it's going to outgrow it soon that Kate had made for us at the Ullen retreat that I attended in Ireland in early November. And I absolutely love this bag, Kate. It's just wonderful. It's made out of stunning Irish linen and um, it's just beautiful. So there you go. That's that. And then what else? Because I actually ended up casting something on, which is being housed in this bag by Jenna Rose, who is a local uh, screen printer and bag, bag maker. She also makes other things. She has uh, tea towels, she has buckets, she has travel bags, um, and she makes these project bags. This is my second ba second bag by her, I believe. Um, I, I absolutely love her work. And in here, I cast on uh, the Rao Work Trees by um, Katrin Schneider. That's a pattern that I've been wanting to make for a while. And I don't have the bow band with me, but I'm using this yarn, uh, which is a Katya yarn, and it's the Concept Tweed. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff in there. There's, it's primarily silk, there's wool, there's mohair, and um, it's a bit of a nubby yarn. You can see that it's got some nubs happening in there. And um, I've had this in my stash for a while, and I wanted to make something with it. Originally, I was going to make the uh, Edith cardigan, which I ended up making into that orange vest. Ah, and here's a little aside for you. I had told you last time that I might end up giving that vest to a friend of mine. Um, however, it didn't fit my friend. So I've kept it. And uh, I think I just put up some pictures on Instagram finally of it now that I knew that it wasn't going to be going to my friend and um, that I found the time to take some pictures. So this was going to be the Edith cardigan and I decided that I would make the Rauwerk Trees by Katrin Schneider instead since I had just finished the Edith. Um, and I really wanted to cast something on and this is what called me to be cast on. It's gotten all mixed up here because I've got two needles because I tried it on the other day to make sure that it fit and it does. It's a bottom up sweater that has these trees on it. Now, because of the nubby nature of this yarn, the trees don't have quite the stitch definition they, that they might have with another yarn. And I've had to make my peace with that. I was, I was actually thinking of, of pulling this back and making something else with this yarn, but I think I've decided to forge ahead uh, because I think that in the end, you'll have you'll have the image quite nicely and I wanted to have sort of a I saw a version that was made in a light color and I thought it would make a really nice sweater to have 
um, a blouse under uh, to wear at work with a pair of pants, for example. Um, so I've decided to, to make it and then I'll be wearing it with some sort of a shirt. And I think that given the nature of the color, I think it needs to have like um, a brighter shirt underneath it, like something like a blue or um, something darker. So I'll pull something out of my wardrobe that'll suit it. But this is as far, I'm just knitting on this occasionally. It's a very easy pattern uh, to, to memorize. So I feel like I feel like I'm becoming a little bit of a multi-knitter here. I'm becoming polygamous in my knitting. Um, that's okay. It's it, That's, I think, telling you what it's been like in my head for the last month or so, just flitting about in all directions. So, um, yeah, not much else to tell you except that it's uh, it's easy. It's, um, it's a well-written pattern so far. I haven't gotten very far in it. This yarn is nice. Um, but I think I was a little slow getting going because I was a little concerned about the stitch definition. But I think that in the end it's going to be okay. And now that I've tried it on and I know that it fits, I'm definitely going to be moving forward on it. Um, and now that I've finished the Christmas knits, I can start moving on to things that I want to make for myself. I'm also going to be casting on a sweater for the friend who didn't fit into the orange vest. Um, she had actually, we had talked about making a colorwork sweater for her. And uh, so I'll probably get that going as well and show that to you next time. And then I have one more last cast on. So um, Patricia of Paradise Island very kindly uh, gave me the Cozy Knitter 2019 Advent Sock Yarn. Now I ended up getting this midway through December and I decided that I would cast it on for January. And if I knit it a little bit here and there, um, I thought that's fine. Even if I knit one stripe a week, I would have socks for next Christmas. So I think it's going to be uh, more of a regular knit than that because it's quite addictive knitting with striped sock yarn, as you know. Um, and this is how far I've gotten so far. So for the toes and the heels, I'm using this wild red yarn that uh, my friend Sue gave me. When she gave me this mug, it had some minis in it from Ginger Snap That. And so this is one of the minis, and I thought that would be great for toes and the heels and the cuffs. So this is what I'm using for that. And I've started doing the different stripes. I'm using a pattern called Kick kick in the pants, I believe, which I've used before. And it's a slip stitch pattern that you can see right there that you only use when you're doing the, when there's a stripe change, a color change in the striping. And, and then you do this little series of uh, slip stitches. It's very easy. Uh, it's, it's a free pattern on Ravelry, I'm quite sure. I made a pair of socks for myself that ended up going to Isla a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I think, that, uh, that she wears. And, uh, and I thought, I'll do that again because it really creates a great effect. The only thing that can happen, and as you can see, I just did uh, a row of slip stitches, so you can't see the effect first. Sometimes the striping might happen halfway through that row, and then it's, it's a little bit awkward to figure out, do I start the slip stitches, because it, it won't create this effect if you don't have the two yarns happening. So I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully I'm making sense today. <laughs> At least some sense. Um, so yeah. But I really love the effect of that, and I think that's going to make it really beautiful. I probably should have started it here, but I didn't actually think about it until I was into the second stripe, and I thought, oh, wait, wait, I want to do a pattern. So I went back, and I started it there. So this is oodles of fun. Thank you, Patricia, for this. This is like so much fun, and I'm just excited that I'm going to have some Christmas socks for next year. So we'll see how that goes. If I end up knitting it once a week or if I end up knitting a stripe a day, um, I'm happy either way. My goodness, those are all my whips. I feel like I got a lot of them. <laughs> On the topic of yarns that came my way over the Christmas period, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about two of them. 
well, not that many came in. I told you about, there were some other minis that came along with this red one from, from Sue. And of course, as I just showed you, there was the, the advent sock from the Cozy Knitter that came my way. In the advent calendar from Kate, there was also this stunning pair of yarns from Fine Fish Yarns. Thank you, Kate. This was my um, 25th, the day the 25th. There were these two beautiful skeins of yarn from Fine Fish Yarns. And these are going to become the Callan Mai Cowl by Kristen Lehrer Woolen Vine Yarns. Um, her recent design, the Callan Mai, I just, it's so beautiful. And I kept thinking, what can I make with it? Or what can I use to make it? What can I use to make it? And I just couldn't think of anything. And so when I opened this on the 25th, I was like, that is becoming the Callan Mai. So um, I hope to cast that on in the next little while. It's just beautiful, just beautiful. So thank you so much, Kate. And this, uh, so this one is called Mood, and this one is called Grunge Green, the mohair that goes with it. But they are just beautiful. And I have a feeling it's going to create quite an interesting effect, um, having the green mohair on this sort of variegated uh, mauve and green yarn. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what that's going to look like. And then... My friend Shella, who's, who's the baddie knitter online, and she also has a podcast, um, she is part of uh, a small group of knitters, and uh, we got together one day, and she dyed up um, 30 gram middies for each of us um, that were different, and that were representative of that person in some way. And she brought me to tears with my mini, I have to say, because um, she said, do you remember that picture that you posted of your father's house? I had posted a picture of my father's house. And if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you probably may remember um, me having some footage from, from where my father lived in his house that he had designed. My father's house was a, green, a gray house with an orange door, and it was in the, in the woods. So there were, there were green trees all around it. And so she um, dyed this beautiful speckled yarn in memory of that. And I'm, I'm, I feel like I could cry, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and it just was such a sweet thing and really touched me. So I have no idea what this is going to become. I've said I might just have to frame it as a wonderful, wonderful memory. Um, but I did see a pair of socks yesterday that had a thick band on the foot of a different color and then the rest of the sock was solid and I thought th that's something that could be interesting to make with these with this mini where the mini would become the thick band on the foot and then the rest of the sock would be solid like it could be a green sock with with this band or an orange sock so that's the only idea that's come to me so far of a way to use this yarn and and really be able to enjoy it. So we'll see, we'll see what ends up happening with it. But I do, if I use it and when I use it, I want it to be something that I'll see it and I'll be able to enjoy it. So thank you, Shella. So that is really it for the knitting content. Um, I thought I would do just two little, well, two little things, two things. Um, first, talk about my word of the year and tell you a little bit about the books that I've read recently. So 2019 is over. Last year, my word of the year ended up being a phrase of the year, and it was, I am here. I had meant to touch base with you guys midway through the year, but I don't think I did. Did I? I don't think I did. To tell you how it was going, because it really was going well with that word. That worked super duper well for me. Um, I reminded myself with that phrase many, many times through the year to stop trying to do many, many things at once and just enjoy what I was doing. Um, it really helped me to just notice the things around me, to be more present, uh, whether it was with another person or in what I was doing. And I think it actually contributed to a wonderful 2019. 2019 ended up being a really good year for me, which I really appreciated after 2018, which was not a great year. Um, it was just a really challenging year for us. 
Um, I think that also contributed to me noticing the simplicity and the niceness of life a little bit more as well. Um, lots of wonderful things happened in 2019. I posted on Instagram some of them this week. Um, there were some wonderful trips. I mean, when I went to New York for Vogue Knitting with Shella, actually, who gave me the mini. Um, went, we went to Uruguay. Uh, we, I went to Toronto. We went to, I went to Ireland. We rented a wonderful cottage in the summer. We went to see Trevor Noah in Montreal. We did so many wonderful things this year. It was just, it, it, I mean, that alone made it magical. But it was just also a really nice, simple year. Um, the most difficult part of my year, to be brutally honest with you, was my work. My work was very, very challenging. It was very intense. And um, had the year itself not been so great, it probably would have had a, a, a bigger impact on me, but it was starting to really uh, exhaust me um, emotionally and mentally. And then I was offered another job in September. <laughs> Um, so, which just felt like such a gift. And uh, so 2019 was a wonderful year for me. And the word I am here really supported me throughout the year. And I think that that's, that's what the word of the year should be. It should be there to remind you of what it is that you really need. So I almost wanted to use I am here again for this year. Um, but I decided that maybe that's not what I need. Uh, although I think that'll continue to be present with me. But I've decided on the word nourish for this year, um, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Another thing that I did last year that kind of went along with the I am here is that I did sort of seasonal bucket lists. Um, so for the spring, you know, what are the things that I want to do in the spring? Were there things that were coming up like uh, the Prince Edward County Yarn Festival, that was in my bucket list so that I wouldn't forget about it. You know, there were exhibits that I wanted to see at the museums or um, walks in certain forests or different things like that. So I would do these bucket lists. So when I was thinking about this year and thinking about the things that I felt like I needed to do this year, I felt like they were, they were things that had to do with taking care of myself or of others or of business. Um, because of my father's estate, I still have stuff going on with that and I find myself procrastinating, but that procrastination just ends up sitting on my shoulders and staring at me in the face. So I thought, you know what, I need to take care of these things. Um, my mother, I, I don't think I've ever really talked about this on the podcast, but um, I am the power of attorney for my mother. My mother has dementia. She has Alzheimer's and she lives in an assisted care facility and I'm I'm her only child and, and her only relative and, and I'm so I'm her guardian essentially and take care of her and and her Alzheimer's is progressing and so I want to care for her um, and spend as much time with her as I can while it still matters. So there was a lot of things that were just I felt like they were about caring whether it was caring for me, caring for others. So my word for this year is nourish and while I do have a lot of different things that I have to take care of that are outside of me, I think it'll also be a way for me to remember to care for myself, um, to notice how I'm feeling, to think about what I need in a particular moment, whether it's something simple and or uh, indulgent or whether it's, um, you know, something a little bit more serious and um, whatever it might be right? I need to go for a walk. I need to take care of, take my vitamins or whatever it might be. So I felt like the word nourish was the word for this year. And uh, um, so let's see how that goes. But I am here worked extremely well for me last year. And um, I'm just so grateful for the year that I had last year. So let's see what 2020 has for in store for this year for all of us. I know that there are people who had really difficult 2019s and so I really hope that 2020 is a simpler year. Um, we all have years that are harder than others and let's just hope that those years are then, um, that what comes after is a lovely simple year. So let's hope for that. And, um, and I'll touch base on the word nourish later on and see how that has worked for me. 
So, um, so yeah, so that was, that's my word of the year. And in terms of books that I've read recently, because I didn't tell you about the books in the last episode, um, I finished My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. And I have to say, I read 17 books in 2019. Um, which is amazing. Now I say read, but I listened to them on Audible and there are also some short stories in there. Um, and I have to say, I think my favorite writer was Daphne du Maurier. Um, I read two of her books last year, Rebecca and then my cousin Rachel, and I really liked them both. I think I might actually have liked my cousin Rachel more than Rebecca. But in both cases, her writing is, is absolutely fabulous. Her storytelling is impeccable and what is great is they are they are good from beginning to end they end really well um and that's one thing i found in some of the books this year that i read they were great stories but th at the end i was a bit disappointed in the way they ended with her books i have a feeling you're never disappointed so i'm actually really looking forward to reading one or two more of her books this year uh, jamaica inn is one that i want to read and i'm not quite sure what else if you happen to have a recommendation let me know um, but her books are interesting because certainly in both of those books uh, Re rebecca and my cousin rachel the characters are not particularly likable um, there's something slightly sinister uh, that goes on underneath that kind of pulls you along and um, she's really questioning gender roles and uh and gender relations it's it's really very interesting and i i absolutely adored both of those books so finished my cousin rachel isla and i were reading eleanor park by rainbow rowell uh which we were listening to it together and it's a teen novel and uh about these two kids who uh become girlfriend and boyfriend and it's great. I really, really, really enjoyed that book. Um, teen fiction can be really wonderful to read. It's, it's very plot driven, but the, which is great. It moves you along from the first paragraph. It's got you in. And um, Eleanor Park was a great story. Uh, it was a great book to listen to with Isla. There is a little bit of swearing, so that's one thing to think about. Um, but I really, uh, I thought that it was a great way of thinking a little bit about, um, you know, about life, about adolescence uh, and life for adolescents. And it dealt with some uh, family issues, which I think was, you know, interesting for Isla to listen to and really enjoyed it. I also finished Americana by Chimananda Ngozi Adichie, who is a Nigerian writer. Um, I had also read a book by her called A Purple Hibiscus a few years ago, which I really enjoyed. And I really liked Americana. She's an incredible writer. Um, the way she puts her ideas together is brilliant. Really, really love the writing. Spectacular. Excellent story. Um, looking at the different perspectives of African immigrants. So one person goes to the UK, one person comes to the United States. Uh, from from and sort of immigration from an African perspective and uh, some of the interesting things that happen to an African person when they go to the States um, it was very good it was really really good uh, it got a little bit um, didactic at times I would say it was kind of it was like trying to teach you um, but I think it was all really very interesting. That was one book where the ending I found a little bit of a letdown somehow. I didn't quite like the way it ended. Um, and towards the end, I, I, didn't, I didn't like what was happening towards the end and the, what she was talking about towards the end as much, but, um, but still really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. And my last book of 2019 was uh, A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towles, I think. Amor Towles is how you pronounce his name. He's an American writer. He's also written a book called Rules of Civility, which I might be interested in reading this year. That was another beautifully written book um, with a lovely subtle humor to it. Um, Another book where I was a little bit disappointed at the very end, just the way it ended, I was left with 
uh, kind of wondering, wait a second, where did that go? <laughs> um, but uh, it's a it's a less plot driven book. It's it really relishes the descriptions um, with a lovely humor. The main character is just delightful as a person. Very very uh, lovely gentleman, but who's got a little bit of a rebellious side to him. And it takes place in uh, the early 1900s in Moscow, and uh, so it's just uh, during the Bolshevik revolution, the last Tsar, and it's a really interesting time period and it's about this man who ends up having to live his life in a hotel. Um, this is a sort of a sentence that's been put on him by the Bolsheviks. So um, that was my last book of 2019. And uh, yeah, I had some great, great books in those books last year. Um, absolutely great books. And um, if I were to tell you my favorite, I couldn't. I'll probably tell you that Daphne du Maurier was my favorite writer of that year, uh, but I also really, really enjoyed um, Becoming by Michelle Obama. I really enjoyed uh, Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. In fact, that's a book I would read again, uh, just because it's, it's just so full of humor and insight and um, the whole family. We all love Trevor Noah at this point. We watch him constantly a little snippets of his work on on Instagram or Facebook and um, I also really enjoyed um, the Yad Yezi book uh, Homegoing that book touched me a lot um, and despite what I just said about Americana by Chimananda Ngozi Adichie I really enjoyed listening to that book a lot I would say those are probably the ones the the most memorable books for me from 2019 um, as well as one more, which is um, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Although I had said that the, I think it took mental health, I think it, it sort of um, talked about mental health in a slightly simplistic way, those characters, I still think about them. So I think that book definitely, there was just something about the way the characters were developed that was really endearing and that I really, that left a mark on me that they've stayed with me. I still think about Eleanor and Raymond. Um, I still remember their names. I remember so much about them. So I would say that those are the books that are the most memorable for me from 2019. So yeah, uh, here we are in 2020 and um, lots of reading ahead, lots of nourishing happening this year, lots of knitting and uh, we'll see. I think there'll be a little bit less travel um, this year, although uh, we'll see what it has in store. We are planning a trip as a family uh, somewhere in Canada this coming summer, probably on the West Coast. Um, and um, I'll be starting a new job this year on, uh, on Monday um, that I'm very excited about, um, nervous about, no, actually, not that much about so I'll tell you more about it another time and um, yeah so I think this brings me to an end every time I come towards the end of recording a podcast I think I've probably forgotten so many things and have probably talked too much about other things but here it is my friends I hope this podcast has found you well I hope 2020 has started out well for you I'm sending you good wishes for the year and uh, thank you again for joining me. Take care, and we'll see you next time.